Thank you so much for the work of NASA, the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies. Uh, you're strengthening, you're empowering the state arts agencies across the nation. So I've now traveled to all 50 states and I've visited at least 200 communities. I've made more than 400 site visits and I have seen firsthand that each state can celebrate its own characteristics in so many ways through the arts. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here to be able to focus on the topic of creative industries because to me that uh, the innovation that comes from creative industries is what advances our nation and the arts are at the heart of that. So not only are the arts helping students, especially those who come from low income households, to even the playing field academically, and not only are the arts providing a path for our military service members and veterans with brain recovery conditions to be able to manage their stress, uh, communicate more clearly, manage their physical pain, not only do we see the arts empowering families who do not use English as their first language to be able to communicate effectively, and not only do the arts instill a sense that there's a beauty and a quality of life in our communities, a life in which each of us deserves to live. But now we can also emphasize through hard evidence that the arts make a material contribution to the economy. And this evidence has been present for generations, but folks, we have so undersold this message that there's still a perception out there with the general public that if the arts attend to our feelings or if they increase our quality of life, then maybe the arts must also suck up time and money and be a frill and a burden carried out by our economy. But it is not the arts versus the economy, and we can reverse that myth. Because when it comes to the ways that the arts provide value, you can have your cake, you can pay for your cake, and you can eat it too. <laughs> because the data show that the arts are a net export gain for the United States, and I am so appreciative of those who've been working very hard to reveal through hard evidence what we're all experiencing our partnership with the Bureau of Economic Analysis at the United States Department of Commerce to get these data for each of the 50 states, the economic studies from Americans for the Arts, the creative economy state profiles from the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies. If the data show that the arts sector accounted for 4.2% of the United States economy and employed nearly 5 million workers, then that means we're right up there contributing to the nation's economy. That's four times more than the agricultural sector adds to the economy. It's $200 billion more than the transportation sector or the warehousing industry. And the art sector grows continuously. It's grown faster at a faster pace than the nation's overall economy. And in the year 2015 alone, consumers spent $31.6 billion on admissions to performing art center events alone. And that was actually a billion dollars more than was originally projected. But I want to be thoughtful when I make these comparisons because I'm not wanting to be saying things like, look at the arts, they're better than the agriculture sector. That isn't the point. The point is that in the arts, we can hold our heads high in so many ways, including the previously under-celebrated contributions that the arts make to our economy. And this year, the Bureau of Economic Analysis was able to give us this data on the impact of the arts for each state economy. So for example, we know New York and California have consistently been leading states for movie production. So relative to, to the national average, did you know that Louisiana was number three? And relative to the national average, did you know that jewelry making in Rhode Island contributes $224 million every year? That's 33 times the national rate. And in Alaska, the arts, as Chairman Brown said, add $1.3 billion to the state's economy. That's 4.1% of all the workers in the state. And Tennessee and North Carolina have the largest rural arts economies in the nation. And art-related printing in Wisconsin contributed $530 million to the state's economy. That's four times greater than the national average. And relative to the size of Montana's economy, musical instrument manufacturing was 4.7 times greater than the national average in 2015. Musical instrument manufacturing contributed $10 million to Montana's economy. So you can find all the facts and figures on each state on our website, and I'm sure uh, we will hear more about it soon. 
I'm so glad we're doing this research because sometimes I laugh because I didn't, I love data and statistics, but I didn't actually get into the arts because I wanted to measure stuff. I wanted to make art. But there are so many people whose main learning style is through the hard evidence. And showing this research has startled them out of an old and tired stereotype that the arts are on a corner by themselves or that the arts are elitist and they only be benefit some people but not others. And so now when we reveal these data, we get responses like, I had no idea that the arts and culture sector contributed this much. And state governments now have more information to be able to go to bat for the arts now that we have data from each state. And people can make decisions on where they want to live and work. Some people look at the data and they say, I want to be in a state that has a significant presence of the arts because I know there's vitality in the community. Others look at the data and they say, I want to be in a place where the arts need help in growing because, and they might choose a place where they can help their community thrive through the arts where there was less art available before they moved in. So now we have a method of collecting economic and industry data to reinforce the importance of the arts and how much it makes on our presence. Uh, it makes it all the stronger to have this data. So there's going to come a time when the arts are embraced for infusing our lives in so many valuable ways, and this economic data contributes to that vision. So thank you for letting me join you today. I'll turn it over to Pam. Pam warned you that I was irrepressible, so yes, I'm back at the microphone. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Chu, for that concise and inspiring uh, summary of why we're here and how important it is that we look at the data side, look at the intrinsic and instrumental benefits of the arts. Without any further ado, I want to introduce a good friend of mine, a great friend of the arts, the senior senator for the great state of Alaska, the Honorable Lisa Murkowski. So I think in the agenda, I was actually supposed to come before <laughs> Dr. Chu, but I am so thankful uh, that I didn't, that I actually had uh, a few minutes here to listen to the statistics that you have cited and the impact that the arts do have to our economy. Um, you know, you get ready in the morning and what am I going to wear today? Black, because today's Tuesday and it's just a black day. But I've got a lot of great art that I wear and am proud to wear. And as I was getting dressed and, and putting on some of, of my favorite earrings that I got at the Alaska Federation of, of Natives Annual Conference, uh, this particular pair came from a very remote island in the Bering Straits. Uh, a, a, a gentleman handcrafts them and, and wor does the whirls with a, with a small piece of, of ivory. Um, from walrus that is harvested by the native people for their food, but every aspect of that walrus is used. And if it's not used for consumption to feed them, it is used for, for the arts to, to really provide for their economic well-being. Because in, in this small island, there is very little in terms of a cash economy. The cash economy comes from their art. It comes from what they create. And as I was racing over here in my very fast-paced, hurried walk, I'm bundled up because it's going to rain later, and I'm wearing my raincoat that comes from a small fishing community uh, in, called Cordova, Alaska. Cordova is probably a population of 2,200 or so. But the jacket that I'm wearing is, is handmade in Cordova, but Copper River Fleece, and I'll do a great shout out to Copper River Fleece because anybody who's in Alaska knows who's the real Alaskan because you're wearing not a design that is unique to Cordova, but the trim that they make is created by a local artist there. There's over a hundred different types of trim that go around your, your jacket. And this, this community, this fishing community is on the map because of its artistry in the clothing. And so I think about the different ways that, that the arts contribute to these small little communities that would otherwise not really have that much 
to keep them up and, and running. I see Congresswoman Bordeo from, from Guam. I had an opportunity uh, just a couple weeks ago to travel with her and other delegates from out in that region. Again, remote, small, islanded communities that might struggle with some level of economy, but the pride that they have in the art, the unique aspects of their art that truly do bring them alive. And so I think it is important that we stop and we think and we recognize and we appreciate what the arts bring to our economy. And it is not natural for us to equate art with the hard, cold statistics of dollars because that's just not who artists are. But I think it's important for the rest of us, particularly those of us that are working to help facilitate the arts in our community, the arts in our society, the arts um, really to represent who we are, that from a, from a budgetary perspective, we do require that data, that statistical data that might not mean much to the artist, but when you're, when you're looking to ensure that there's a level of accountability, uh, we need to be there with you. So thank you for what you're doing to shine the more technical, boring, cold, hard, <laughs> ugly, maybe it needs to be spruced up a little bit with some color or flowers or something, I don't know. But do what you need to do, which is, again, demonstrate the pertinence, the life that art really brings. I'm, I'm delighted to be with you for just a few minutes. Dr. Chu, you know you're welcome back in, in Alaska anytime. Uh, we appreciate the multiple visits that you have. And Ben, thank you for your, your doggedness in this area. Uh, I think you all know that we were able to to uh, not only provide support for the arts through, through the omnibus last year and, and give a bump when it's not, uh, it's not been easy to give bumps into these accounts. Know that my commitment uh, with you going forward in this next round of appropriations is to do more of the same. So look forward to working with you and uh, celebrate. Thank you.